Welcome to the Business Finance Bulletin, episode 242. to the latest Business Finance Bulletin with me, Rob Warlow from Business Loan Services, the commercial finance expert. In this bulletin, Experian reveals the UK region with the strongest business credit score, NatWest rolls out its digital lending platform and businesses stockpiling ahead of Brexit. When it comes to applying for finance, you may or may not know that your business credit score has a major influence on the decision being made by your lender. Now, your lender, when it reviews your finance request, will check out your business credit score for two reasons. Number one, if it's really bad, they're not going to do the loan. But also, your average credit score will also impact on the price that they're going to charge you. In other words, the interest rate. Now, Experian, one of the UK's leading credit reference agencies, has taken a look at its portfolio and worked out which is the best and worst performing region in the UK in terms of average business credit score. And the winner, the top best performing region in terms of the highest credit score is, and cue drum roll, the Southwest. So businesses in the Southwest have an average business credit score of 54.7 out of 100. And that's up from 53.4% in the previous 12 months. Now, the worst performing region, unfortunately, is London. They come out at 47.2 out of 100. So you can see quite a difference there between the London and the Southwest. So if you are looking to uh, obtain finance, just remember the importance of your credit score. And what do you need to be doing to make sure your credit score remains high, pay your bills on time, file your accounts on time. Those are two key things that you can do to make sure that your credit score remains high. In previous bulletins, I've highlighted the fact that many high street banks, the old guard, are very much trying to play catch up as regards um, all of the new players on the block, the fintech providers, as they're called, fintech being financial technology. Well, some time ago in 2017, NatWest launched kind of a trial version of its online digital lending platform called ESME or ESME Loans. Well, NatWest is satisfied now that the system works and has now decided to fully roll it out amongst its customer base. During the trial period, they've lent out £36 million to 570 customers. Um, the loan size varies from £10,000 up to a maximum of £150,000, and it's unsecured. The application process is very quick, apparently takes about 10 minutes, and if approved there and then, the funds will be in your account within the hour. So a very slick uh, professional system. So if you're in the market for a loan between 10 k and 150 k um, just pop along to their website, which is e smeloans.com and there you'll find all the details on how it works and how to apply. In the previous bulletin, episode 241, I proudly highlighted the fact that we went through a whole episode without mentioning Brexit. Well, unfortunately, now we're back to normal. Yep, I've got to mention that dreaded B word again. Well, in what context? Well, Lloyds Bank, as part of its monthly manufacturers PMI index survey, has highlighted the fact that it seems to be that manufacturers particularly are starting to stockpile ahead of Brexit. Yeah, they're really not sure about the continuity of supply and their index seems to indicate that there is a higher than average stock purchase activity going on. Now, of course, we can understand why manufacturing businesses in particular want to do this. But the reason I highlighted this to you is, of course, that you've got to be careful when you're doing this because it can have a major negative impact on cash flow. You've got to remember that stock on the shelves is akin to a virtual bank account, a bank full of cash sat on your shelves. And of course, when it's sat on the shelves, it's not in your bank account. And that's how then you can quickly run into cash flow problems if you're not careful. So if you are a little bit concerned about what Brexit brings and you are stockpiling, make sure that you really plan ahead properly, look at your cash flow forecast so you don't inadvertently run out of cash. Well, that's it for another bulletin. As ever, I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, please don't forget to give it a like and a share. So look forward to being with you next time. In the meantime, have a great, successful and profitable week.